Now we're gonna check to see if the number of error checks is greater than the max. So let's go ahead and copy this. If the number of error checks is greater than or equal to the max error checks, then we're going to say we have a possible error equals true. And now we're gonna return a possible error. Else, meaning in all of the situations, if we don't have greater than or equal to, all we're gonna do is take the number of error checks. We're gonna say number of error checks equals the number of error checks plus one. And, and if, don't forget to return the number of error checks. Also, when the number of error checks is greater than or equal to the max error checks, we're gonna to wanna to send one consecutive error. So below possible errors true, we're gonna send num consecutive errors equals num consecutive errors plus one. And then we're gonna also return the number of consecutive errors. Additionally, once we've reached the maximum error checks and we know that there's a possible error, we're gonna wanna reset the number of error checks so that we can again check to see if there are more errors. So to do that, copy the num of error checks and below possible error, we're gonna paste num error checks and we're gonna say equals zero. And then we're gonna return that as well. So we're gonna do and return num of error checks. Additionally, at the beginning of our function, we're gonna set possible error to false and program broken to false. The reason we're doing this is because if a possible error gets triggered right here, it will return that there's a possible error. However, the next time this function gets called, possible error will still be true and it will jump straight into what happens when there's a possible error. So to prevent that, every time the function gets called, we're gonna make sure possible error gets set to false. With program false, we wanna make sure that there is no possible way we will ever get a program broken error unless we actually got a program broken error right here. Otherwise, we want to make sure there's no chance that the bot is accidentally going to break. I also want to cover real quick, if you guys noticed in the return function here, we've returned three separate variables. So all you have to do to return multiple variables is just put an and and then the next variable you wanted to return. So the function is basically done now. Every time we call error checks, starting from the bottom, you'll see the number of error checks is going to get increased by one until the number of error checks equals the max number of error checks which we defined up here as 25. Now, you can set the max error checks to whatever you want, but for this purpose, we're just gonna set it to 25. Now, every time there is a max error or we've reached the max error, we're gonna say there was a possible error, and then we're gonna return the fact that there was a possible error, as well as resetting the error checks and saying that we've had, so far, we've had one consecutive error check. The program will continue to execute until we reach um, our maximum number of error checks. If we've reached our maximum number of error checks, we're gonna say, hey, our program is probably broken and we're going to return that. So using the error check function does not guarantee that we're going to get a program broken message. What I mean by that is we're only really going to use this function when we're waiting to see if a change has happened. If the change has taken place, all of this is meaningless. However, if the change has not taken place yet, it's going to keep on adding number of consecutive errors until it reaches program broken status. If somewhere in the middle, it starts working the way it's supposed to, everything gets reset. So this is basically a fail safe that if it takes, you know, this damn long to get it to work the way we want it to, let's just stop now before we get in trouble and get caught for botting.